hungry, lonely lives, wrapped in the chill of midwinter, comes now among us, born into poverty's embrace, new life for the this who lives with the lonely, sharing their sorrow, knowing their hunger. This is Christ revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, a child of the child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap this evening, who angels greet with them from sweet, while shepherds watch our keep. Shepherds, God, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him God, the babe, the son of Mary. My lies
Thank you for tuning in to be a part of this celebration today. Indeed, the sadness of our time melts away as nothing as we think about the great glory of welcoming Jesus Christ anew. Perhaps the most magical part of coming to church on Christmas is just seeing the lights, the decorations, and of course, the nativity set where we feel the power of the story of Jesus' birth. So this is a little collection of the manger scenes from all of our churches so that we might recall that magical story for those of us who are children at heart, whether age one or 101. According to the gospel, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. So all went, each according to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family of David. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, but for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. The Magi had been overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child and Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened up their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. I believe that all of us can look at a manger scene and see ourselves within it, the faces of those around us, for we all look for a sign, we all search for the angel's word, we all at times find no room at the end. But in Jesus' birth, we indeed have our hope. So to you and your family, we wish a very Merry Christmas. May the joy of this day truly live in our hearts. A couple came to Bethlehem, expecting child they searched the end.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I want to welcome all of you here for this, those of you who are watching in your homes as we come together to celebrate this beautiful feast of Christmas. And we might ask ourselves on this special day, Jesus, what prompted you to leave your home in heaven and come down to this earth and be born a human being? Silence answers love. Yes, Jesus came to give our lives a peace that only he can give. Let's pause for a moment in silence and in gratitude. Lord Jesus, 
You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, at each Eucharist, you give us your body and blood as our spiritual food and drink as we journey together to our eternal homeland. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it. Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. 
all the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, This I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord, for today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. I know this isn't, doesn't look like your average Christmas as we're all watching in different places and ways, but, but I kind of hope that in a way you feel the power of being able to pray at home with your family, that this is not just a, a one-time thing, but a pretty special thing that we are doing tonight, all in the effort of keeping Christmas holy. For it is absolutely essential that each of us make our spiritual journey to Bethlehem each and every year. For after all, we are that young couple sent out on the journey to go to their homeland with no room in the inn. And we are those shepherds outside of the city waiting for a sign or an angel to call us in. And we are those magi far, far away, just waiting for a sign of hope to appear in the sky. So what we come as a people, that very heart of prayer is very real. And I just want to say a couple words about where we are going to Bethlehem. Now, historically, Bethlehem is a, just a tiny little town kind of built in a bunch of hills with a whole bunch of caves. It's a little ways outside of Jerusalem, which was the old historical capital. Not really of significance, except historically, some important people of the Bible who were buried there, and most importantly, that was the home of Jesse, the home of David, where the prophet Samuel came to find him. So when you think about where Jesus literally would have been born, amongst all those caves, many of those were used to shelter animals or supplies. So literally, if you were to go to the, to the Holy Land, you would go below the Church of the Nativity to an ancient cave that has always been revered as the very place where Jesus was born. Or perhaps some scholars think that if the Holy Family made that trip, many others did as well, and therefore there could have been hundreds of families, of people just sleeping outside in one, two, three big rows or patches. 
So just one little cry of an infant in the midst of so many people who had no room at the inn. And the interesting thing is you take that contrast of humility, the one who was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. The fascinating thing about Bethlehem is right outside of the town, you have this mountain that was made into a fortress by Herod, the same King Herod that out of fear had all the children in the area slayed. The same King Herod that literally, historically, is documented for killing many of his family members out of paranoia that they might rise up and take over his power. So on this mountain, he literally had soldiers over decades take the top of one mountain and put it on the top of his so that he had this impenetrable fortress if he ever needed to escape from Jerusalem and have a place. And there in that fortress, you had all kinds of luxury things that were gathered so that Herod could live out his moments of, of terror in absolute luxury. What a contrast, isn't it? The humility of the infant born among many in a manger versus the power of a king. But you think, which had the lasting authority? Clearly, Herod had a great day, but he has come and gone, and only those who really love to study the Bible will ever remember his name. But the influence of that infant lives in our hearts in a powerful way because of the humility, the simplicity of it, that clearly, for those of us who have the eyes of faith, we can see God in this newborn king. And as a people who make that annual journey to visit our newborn king, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A holy night has dawned upon us. With wonder and joy, we present our prayers to the Lord. That the love of God in Jesus Christ will empower the church's mission to the nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth, that the song of the angels may inspire those who govern nations to seek peaceful resolutions to global conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those who have COVID-19 this Christmas, May they be healed and be comforted in Christmas joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an answer to the prayers on our live stream, bulletin, and Facebook pages. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the grace of God in Jesus Christ will gladden God's people in the harvest of hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who find this time of year difficult, especially those mourning the death of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus, our Christ, as at your birth as a helpless infant, you melted the hearts of all. Help us to share your love generously with your people where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. Make acceptable, O Lord, our offering on this joyful day when you have made known the reconciliation that makes us completely pleasing in your sight and readies us for the fullness of worship in your sight. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call us strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with joy, we join the angels in celebration as we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes. 
created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may share an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose intercession in your presence we rely for help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and give kind admittance to your kingdom all of the faithful departed. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with those around us. Behold the Lamb of God, born of the Virgin Mary. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
We pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine rebirth for us, so he may be given even of the rebirth of eternal life for us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of uh, Father Edward, Father Julius, myself, and all, all of the staff in our four different parishes, our musicians that were with us here today, we wish you uh, the blessings of Christmas, that you may know God is with you in good times and in bad, and for us to always give thanks for God's presence. May you have a blessed Christmas day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray for God's blessing. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and makes you make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realms, fill you with the gifts of his peace and make you sharers with Christ in heaven. Amen. Amen. And, may, and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth glorifying God by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.